In this video, we'll use exponential equations in some real-life applications, like population growth and radioactive decay. I'll also introduce the ideas of half-life and doubling time. In this first example, let's suppose we invest $1,600 in a bank account that earns 6.5% annual interest, compounded once a year. How many years will it take until the account has $2,000 in it, if we don't make any further deposits or withdrawals? Since our money is earning 6.5% interest each year, that means that every year the money gets multiplied by 1.065. So after t years, my 1,600 gets multiplied by 1.065 to the t power. I'll write this in function notation as f of t equals 1,600 times 1.065 to the t where f of t is the amount of money after t years. Now we're trying to figure out how long it will take to get $2,000. $2,000 is an amount of money, so that's an amount for f of t. And we're trying to solve for t, the amount of time. So let me write out my equation and make a note that I'm solving for t. Now to solve for t, I want to first isolate the tricky part. So I'm going to, the tricky part is the part with the exponential in it. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1,600. So that gives me 2,000 over 1,600 equals 1 1.065 to the t. I can simplify this a little bit further as 5 fourths. Now that I've isolated the tricky part, my next step is going to be to take the log of both sides. That's because I have a variable in the exponent, and I know that if I log take the log of both sides, I can use log rules to bring that exponent down where I can solve for it. So I think I'll use log base e this time. So I have ln 5 fourths equals ln of 1.065 to the t. Now by the power rule for logs, on the right side, I can bring that exponent t down and multiply it in the front. Now it's easy to isolate t just by dividing both sides by ln of 1.065. Typing that into my calculator, I get that t is approximately 3.54 years. In the next example, we have a population of bacteria that initially contains 1.5 million bacteria, and it's growing by 12% per day. We want to find the doubling time. The doubling time means the amount of time it takes for a quantity to double in size. For example, the amount of time it takes to get from the initial 1.5 million bacteria to 3 million bacteria would be the doubling time. Let's start by writing an equation for the amount of bacteria. So if, say, P of T represents the number of bacteria in millions, then my equation, and t represents time in days, then p of t is going to be given by the initial amount of bacteria times the growth factor 1.12 to the t. That's because my population of bacteria is growing by 12% per day, that means it, the number of bacteria gets multiplied by 1.12. Since we're looking for the doubling time, we're looking for the t value when p of t will be twice as big. So I can set p of t to be 3 and solve for t. As before, I'll start by isolating the tricky part, taking the log, bringing the t down, and finally solving for t. Let's see, 3 over 1.5 is 2, so I can write this as ln2 over ln1.12. Using my calculator, that's about 6.12 days. It's an interesting fact that doubling time only depends on 
the growth rate, that 12% growth, not the initial population. In fact, I could have figured out the doubling time without even knowing how many bacteria were in my initial population. Let me show you how that would work. If I didn't know how many I started with, I could still write P of T equals A times 1.12 to the T, where A is our initial population that I don't know what it is. Then if I want to figure out how long it takes for my population to double, well, if I start with A and double that, I get 2A. So I'll set my population equal to 2A, and I'll solve for T. Notice that my A's cancel, and so when I take the log of both sides and bring the T down and solve for T, I get the exact same thing as before. It didn't matter what the initial population was. I didn't even have to know what it was. In this next example, we're told the initial population and we're told the doubling time. We're not told by what percent the population increases each minute or, or by what number we're supposed to multiply the population by each minute. So we're going to have to solve for that. I do know that I want to use an equation of the form y equals a times b to the t, where t is going to be the number of minutes and y is going to be the number of bacteria. And I know that my initial amount a is 350, so I can really write y equals 350 times b to the t. Now the doubling time tells me that when 15 minutes have elapsed, my population is going to be twice as big, or 700. Plugging that into my equation, I have 700 equals 350 times b to the 15. Now I need to solve for b. Let me clean this up a little bit by dividing both sides by 350. That gives me 700 over 350 equals b to the 15th. In other words, 2 equals b to the 15th. To solve for b, I don't have to actually use logs here because my variable is in the base, not in the exponent, so I don't need to bring that exponent down. Instead, the easiest way to solve this is just by taking the 15th root of both sides, or equivalently, the 1 15th power. That's because if I take b to the 15th to the 1 15th, I multiply by exponents. That gives me b to the 1 is equal to 2 to the 1 15th. In other words, b is 2 to the 1 15th, which as a decimal is approximately 1.047294. I like to use a lot of decimals if I'm doing a decimal approximation in these kind of problems to increase accuracy. But of course, the most accurate thing is just to leave b as it is. And I'll do that and rewrite my equation as y equals 350 times 2 to the 1 15th to the t. Now, I'd like to work this problem one more time. And this time, I'm going to use the form of the equation y equals a times e to the rt. This is called a continuous growth model. It looks different, but it's actually an equivalent form to this growth model over here. And I'll say more about why these two forms are equivalent at the end. I can use the same general ideas to solve in this form. So I know that my initial amount is 350. I now know, again, that when t is 15, my y is 700. So I plug in 700 here, 350 e to the r times 15, and I solve for r. Again, I'm going to simplify things by dividing both sides by 350. That gives me 2 equals e to the r times 15. This time, my variable does end up being in the exponent, so I do want to take the log of both sides. I'm going to use natural log because I already have an e in my problem, so natural log and e are kind of more harmonious together than, than common log with base 10 and e. So I take the log of both sides. Uh, now I can pull the exponent down, so that's r times 15 times ln of e. Well, ln of e is just 1 right, because ln of e is asking what power do I raise e to to get e, that's just 1. And so I get 15r equals ln2, so r is equal to ln2 divided by 15. 
Let me plug that back in to my original equation. That's e to the ln2 over 15 times t. Now I claimed that these two equations were actually the same thing, just looking different. And the way to see that is if I start with this equation, and I rewrite as e to the ln2 over 15 like that to the t, well, I claim that this quantity right here is the same thing as my 2 to the 1 15th. And in fact, one way to see that is e to the ln2, I'll write it to the 1 15th, right? That's the same, because every time I take a power to a power, I multiply exponents. But what's e to the ln2? e and ln undo each other. So that's just 350 times 2 to the 1 15th to the t. Ta-da! The equations are really the same. And these, you'll always be able to find two different versions of an exponential equation. Sort of the standard one, a times b to the t, or the continuous growth one, a times e to the rt. In this last example, we're going to work with half-life. Half-life is pretty much like doubling time. It just means the amount of time that it takes for a quantity to decrease to half as much as originally started with. We're told that the half-life of radioactive carbon-14 is 5,750 years. So that means it takes that long for a quantity of, of radioactive carbon-14 to decay so that you just have half as much left and the rest is non-radioactive form. So we're told a sample of bone that originally contained 200 grams of radioactive carbon-14 now contains only 40 grams. We're supposed to find out how old the sample is. This is called carbon dating. Let's use the continuous growth model this time. So our final amount, so this is our amount of radioactive C14, is going to be the initial amount times e to the rt. We could have used the other model, too. We could have used f of t equals a times b to the t, but I just want to use a continuous model for practice. So we know that our half-life is 5,750. So what that means is when t is 5,750, our amount is going to be one-half of what we started with. Let me see if I can plug that into my equation and figure out, use that to figure out what r is. That's r is called the continuous growth rate. So I plug in 1 half a for the final amount. a is still the initial amount, e to the r, and I have 5,750. I can cancel my a's, and now I want to solve for r r is in my exponent, so I do need to take the log of both sides to solve for it. I'm going to use log base e since I already have an e in my problem. Log base e is more compatible with e than log base 10 is. Okay, now on the left side I still have log of 1 half, a natural log of 1 half. On the right side, ln and e to a power, those undo each other. So I'm left with r times 5,750. Now I can solve for r. It's ln 1 half over 5,750. I could work that out as a decimal, but it's actually more accurate just to keep it in exact form. So now I can rewrite my equation. I have f of t equals a times e to the ln 1 half over 5,750 t. Now I can use that to figure out my problem. In my problem, the bone originally contained 200 grams. That's my A. I want to figure out when it's going to contain only 40 grams. That's my final amount. And so I need to solve for T. I'll clean things up by dividing both sides by 200. Let's say 40 over 200 is 1 fifth. Now I'm going to take the LN of both sides and ln and e to the power undo each other. So I'm left with ln of 1 fifth equals ln of 1 half divided by 5750t. And finally, I can solve for t. 
that's super messy, but careful use of my calculator gives me an answer of 13,351 years, approximately. That kind of makes sense in terms of the half-life, because to get from 200 to 40, you have to decrease by half a little more than two times, right? Decreasing by half once would get you to 100, decreasing to half again would get you to 50, a little more than 40. And two half-lives is getting pretty close to 13,000 years. This video introduced a lot of new things. It introduced a continuous growth model, which is another equivalent way of writing an exponential function. The relationship is that the b in this example is the same thing as e to the r in that version. It also introduced the ideas of doubling time and half-life, the amount of time it takes a quantity to double or decrease to half in an exponential growth model.